Professor Monique Mahendra, can you please start? <laughs> Thank you. Very welcome. First of all, I pay my obeisance to the great adorable ones, to the great liberated ones, to the great preceptors, to the great religious teachers, to the great saints, monks and nuns of the whole cosmos. This is our auspicious starting Mangala Charan. Om Rim Namo Arahantanam Om Rim Namo Shiddhanam Om Rim Namo Ayariyanam Om Rim Namo Uvajjayanam Namo Loli Shabba Shahunam Esho Panch Namo Garo Shahu Pav Parashanu Mangalanan Chasavgeshin Padaman Havai Mangalan Padaman Havai Mangalan I, first of all, appreciate the efforts taken by your university to hold such an important seminar on the comparative studies and research in Jain philosophy rather Jain Darshan and modern science. I think that first of all, let us make the purpose of such blending of Jain philosophy and science clear. According to my view, the real purpose of such blending of Jain philosophy with science and technology can help us to pave the way for establishment of better global world order which is free from at least gross violence, at least gross restlessness, at least gross environmental imbalances, at least gross ecological imbalances, at least gross cruelty and hatred. These should be the main purpose of comparative studies and research in Jain philosophy and science and technology. And also we want to cultivate the virtues like universal Friendliness, which is called Maitri, Vishwa Maitri Bhav. Universal compassion, Vishwa Karuna Bhav. Universally, universal harmony and reconciliation, which is the message of Anekanta Vada. These are the main purposes of holding such seminars and to go forward in the direction of the comparative studies. The need of the hour is that science and technology has made an unprecedented progress and development in this field. And we can get those tools and those apparatuses, equipments to utilize them for the not only for the research, but also for the dissemination of what findings we get from that. And that we have to apply in the world global life, world global uh, society. The human society, the humankind 
as a whole should get this message, should be benefited by the findings of our research. And I think we shall go a long way if we continue these efforts. Now, first point of my lecture is that Jainism believes in the independent existence of what is called Atman or Jiva, which we call in English as the soul or the self. This is a non-physical reality. Generally in science, people are concerned with only the physical reality, which is definitely major and the atomic structure which has evolved all these universal material universe. But also there is a concept, even in science, of non-physical existence. And you all, all of you uh, must be knowing that space and time, these are certain realities which are not physical realities. The nature of this reality is non-physical. In the same way, according to Jain philosophy, Jain darshan, soul or atman, it is called appa or aya in Prakrit language, that it is called consciousness. Consciousness is the characteristic of the substance soul. Just as materiality or what we call as the color, smell, touch and taste, these are the properties of matter or physical reality. So what is a physical reality must have all these four perceptible qualities in them. Whereas soul being a non-physical reality is devoid of all these properties. The characteristic of soul is consciousness, chetana, which is called uva oga in Prakrit, upa yoga, and it means the activity of consciousness. The consciousness which is active, not passive. And nature of soul is such that it is always continuously going on and on without stopping. That is to say, the consciousness is always active in all kinds of organisms, in all kinds of living beings, in all kinds of souls. So this way we can find the contrast between the nature of the physical reality, which is popularly known as matter, and the other word which people use is mind. But Jainism differs here and would like to use the word consciousness. So we have to differentiate fundamentally, metaphysically, between matter, that is physical reality, and consciousness, that is non-physical reality. The whole universe, the whole cosmos, whatever is going on in this world, in this universe, is just nothing else but the interplay of mind and consciousness, of Pudgal, we call matter Pudgal. Pudgal is the, the term, Jain, Jain technical term, used for the physical uh, reality. We call it Pudgal. It includes both the mass and energy. In science, we know now very clearly that mass and energy are the aspects of the same physical reality. Sometimes it manifests as a mass, sometimes it manifests as energy. So that, that combination, both matter and energy, that is called Pudgal. Pudgal. I will explain you why this term Pudgal is used. But this Pudgal is one main player of the play of the drama of universal. 
the whole universal drama is going on and the main actor one of them is pudgal is physical reality the second actor is soul or consciousness but the the crux of the thing the, the most difficult and intricate part is to understand the relation correlation interaction interplay of on one hand the soul or consciousness and on the other hand the matter pudgal or what is called the physical reality according to jain cosmological concept cosmogonical concept rather the universe is is a without beginning and without end from the point of view of time it is a eternal entity it never comes into being it was there from always when ever it was it was there and now it will never end that is what we know is the universe and in jain technological technological terminology it is called as loka loka is that part of the space which we call as universal universe space in itself is a another non physical reality like soul separate and different from matter space is in itself infinite without boundary without end and therefore the whole space as an infinite entity it has got certain part of it which is which is called loka or the universal space or the cosmic space in which we live it is only one the whole non cosmic space as a whole is as god in the center say center is only a, our our metaphorical language it is one part a one spot in the non the total non cosmic space a small part which we called as this universe in which we live it is called loka or the cosmic space in this cosmic space which is also infinite or eternal from the with respect to time the in the space itself cos cosmic as well as non cosmic the total space is again infinite with respect to uh, space and uh, time that is it is without beginning without end now this interplay of matter and soul is going on in this universe in this world in this cosmos from beginning less time and the number of souls in the world is also infinite this is a mathematical quantity which is called infinite and that is certain certain explanation mathematical explanations to understand this concept but um, more or less we can compare this infinity with the infinite uh, concept of infinity in modern mathematics and physics so we say the number of souls in the universe is infinite the number of pudgal is infinite pudgal is in two forms one which is called as the paramanu that is the ultimate indivisible indivisible particle of the physical reality that is called paramanu the absolute atom we can call it it cannot be divided further indivisible unit so there are infinite number of paramanus in the universe as well as there are infinite number of material aggregates which are formed on account of the association and dissociation of physical structures composed of these ultimate particles so you can understand in this vast universe in this vast cosmic space 
which is in itself finite with respect to space. It is not infinite. It is a definite size, a definite shape, and it is only a very, very small part of the total alok, total non-cosmic space, which is infinite. Now, our interplay, our world is related with loga. In this loga, the number of infinite souls there are there. Then the number of uh, items and number of skandhas, that is aggregates, that is the, the, the formation, the structures which are formed by the association, dissociation of these, uh, what we call as the ultimate items, permanence. In these, there are certain categories. One of these categories, which is the most important, and which plays exactly the role of the hero in physical world. That is called Karma Vargana. I have written a book explaining the nature, and you can see the title here, Neuroscience and Karma. Neuroscience and Karma. This is the book in which I have given the concept of karma. Karma is one of the eight groups of what we call Udgal, but very important, most important, because it can influence by its power, by its strength, by its nature, the soul. And the soul has the property to have interaction with the Pudgar. The both, one, on one hand the soul, and on one hand the Pudgar, they have got the in, intrinsic power, they have got the talent to interact with each other without even disturbing their own structure. That is the soul is associated with karmic Pudgal. And the karmic Pudgal gets associated with the soul. And then there is the action and reaction. The action of Pudgal on Jiva. The action of matter on consciousness. And again, the consciousness affected by these kind of cycles of reactions goes on affecting the material world. It goes on attracting more and more karmic particles, gets them bound, gets them bound with it, and that is the cause of the infinite cycle of transmigration of birth and death in the universe. All souls, one souls, who are in the world continuously undergo the birth and death because of the karmic association with soul. And the reasons, the causes of the bondage of these karmic material particles with the soul, there are mainly five causes. It is called asrava. The asrava is integral part of the soul itself. With asrava, the soul gets transformed. One state of the transformation is in the form of which we call as mithyatva, perverse outlook, perverse view. And every soul, even without the development, developed uh, biological structure, which we call even nigoda, one sense, one sense organs only, they also have got this kind of perverse outlook or view. Okay. So our problem is that how to resolve all these things. The thing is that we have to find ways which is given in Jainism as a practice of mainly meditation, again penances, again inhibition of the ashram and that can change our consciousness. What we have to bring about is ultimate transformation of our own consciousness. That will be that will be that will result in ultimate transformation of human brain, 
of human neuroscience, of human biochemical reactions which are going in the body responsible for our behavior and attitude. We want to create a world which is full of compassion, which is full of friendliness, which is full of love, which is full of cooperation. For that, we have to bring out the transformation. We have to apply science, apply technology, apply philosophy, apply spiritual techniques. All these things together can bring about this. We can test it. We can uh, prove it on equipments and we find that there is a real change in this. And in this way, if education, global education, can evolve such system in which the training of transformation of brain is given from the childhood to all, everywhere in global education, we can just create the human brain, real human brain, free from inhuman tendencies, inhuman instincts at certain, to certain level. Altogether, it is very difficult, but on mass level, on global level, we can evolve. This is the world in which we live, in the world of science and technology. We can utilize both. And these techniques are so easy to learn techniques. Even a child can learn it. Even a pregnant woman, if she is given such training, the fetus or the embryo in her, her, um, her body will get this training when he is born. He will have a completely changed brain from the normal birth. So this is what we want to do. We want to translate into action the message of the great Lord Mahavira and even the great Lord Buddha, the great Lord Christ. All of them, the great seers and sages of what is called as Hindu philosophy or Vedanta, Sankhya, and we blend together all them, we blend all the nations, and let us see how we can make this world a better world in which all these problems, at least the problems of this bloody wars, should be abolished once for all. I think this is to be done. Let us all join together and do in our India, in our country, our religious leader, Acharya Sri Mahashramanji, is taking uh, efforts, a very, very stern efforts to change the heart of the people, explain to them the utility of this through Ahinsa Yatra, walking in foot for hundreds and thousands of kilometers and getting this message. And now we can utilize this technology and propagate all over the world. So let us hope for a better world. We are going to start online courses in training in nonviolence. It will be available to any corner, any part of the world. So let us see our university, Jain Vishwadharti Institute in India, Ladnu, Rajasthan, has evolved a course, training course, and just we are going to launch it on online training course. So I thank you very much, especially our um, old um, friend uh, Peter Hugels, who has taken this efforts to connect us, all of us, and my colleague, my colleague, Dr. Dr. Muni Avijit Kumar is with me. He has done his PhD. So I am now 79, but he is 29. So he will continue this work. He is also expert in English and philosophy. So let us sit all together and go further. Thank you.